Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this really beautiful video that was actually released by the European Southern Observatory that you see right here on the screen and the links for which you can actually find in the description below that um, has actually um, been mostly used or done to kind of promote astronomy to excite people to show them how wonderful, incredible and absolutely amazing the universe is. And what this video actually shows you is uh, what's known as a planetary nebula. There it is coming up on the screen right now. This is the nebula known as ESO 577-24. Now the videos that the ESO has created uh, are for the most part educational, but at the same time it's actually a really good opportunity for me to kind of um, jump into this and, well, first of all promote these videos because they're absolutely awesome, but also to kind of give you an idea of why this is actually kind of interesting and exciting and why we're actually looking at the future of our own sun. Our own sun one day will actually look uh, pretty much very similar to what you see right here. Now, so these are actually called planetary nebula, but unfortunately they have nothing to do with the planets. It's just a misnomer from uh, confusion back in the days when astronomers actually thought that it was planets, but it turns out it's not. It, it is basically um, a kind of a stage in the life of a typical star, such as our sun that you see right here. And one day, um, well, when our sun gets old enough, it's first going to turn into a red giant. And a typical red giant, or I guess the more famous red giant, similar to what our sun will become, is the nearby star known as Aldebaran. Let me see if I can actually find Aldebaran right now. Um, essentially, it is something that's going to look like... It's a binary system here, uh, something that's going to look like this. It's going to be very, very, very large in terms of size. The actual size of the star um, is, well, if you were to put the star in the middle of our own solar system, um, it would probably reach all the way to Earth. And this is kind of what our sun will be as well. And it will most, most likely will probably swallow Earth, Venus and Mercury. Um, Mars will most likely be a survivor though. And um, eventually, after about a billion years of being this really, really fat giant, also known as a red giant, also known, or I guess more officially known as main branch red giant, it will eventually start ch changing and turning into something else. Here's actually another famous red giant very close to us. This is Arcturus. Um, very, very beautiful star. Uh, both of these stars you can actually see in the night sky. They're quite famous, quite visible. Uh, but Arcturus in Space Engine is absolutely amazing because it also has a couple of planets orbiting here and we can even take a look at one of them by jumping a little bit closer to it and there's actually quite a lot of planets to, to take a look at but this one is, as you can see, basically a molten lava rock so it's not a very pleasant world to live on. And so um, this is probably what Mars is going to look like when the Sun becomes a red giant. But then eventually it's not going to be able to maintain this shape anymore and eventually we'll actually start releasing all of the material from uh, the outer shell and leaving behind just a tiny core which is going to be the white dwarf. So eventually our sun and Arcturus and Aldebaran and of course uh, many other stars similar to our sun will become white dwarfs and for about 10,000 years they are actually going to look very similar to this beautiful planetary nebula ESO 57724. So this was actually taken by uh, the ESO, by the very large telescope as it's known, that belongs to the ESO. And um, I honestly think this is one of the better pictures I've seen so far this year. Absolutely gorgeous, very, very beautiful and kind of mind blowing to the point where you start thinking about, well, this is our future right there. The only question that's left to kind of discuss here is, what actually happens to all of this gas afterwards? So there's a white dwarf that's going to be in the middle, which you can, you can actually see right here. And all of this gas um, is actually being ionized by the radiation from the white dwarf. The reason we see all of this uh, nebula-like stuff is because of the super powerful radiation that's coming off the star and it interacts with the gas and basically makes it shine that way. But what happens to the gas afterwards? Does it actually go somewhere and become new planets and new stars? Did some of that ga gas end up like inside our bodies maybe? Or does it just kind of escape into the midst of intergalactic space and remains lonely and alone and forever forgotten? So that's a kind of an interesting question, I guess, to maybe one day try to trace this gas. But for now, um, all we can do, I guess, is try to admire these creations and remember that one day this is actually our future right here.
For now, though, go check out the videos for um, well, the ESO channel, I guess, uh, that I posted in the description below. They're absolutely mind-blowing. The music that they have is just brilliant. And I really like what they're doing, how they're actually showing these very beautiful pictures to inspire the new generation of ast astronomers and astrophysicists. I myself became actually fascinated with space because of very similar photos that I used to look at when I was younger. And so this is something that's absolutely beautiful and hopefully will inspire a new generation of people exploring the universe. For now though, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. I just wanted to basically promote the videos that they posted and give you an idea of what Planetary Nebula are all about. And also maybe in the comments below, let me know what made you interested in space. Was it something like a picture or a person that may have showed you something that inspired you to actually pursue this as an interest? I think for me, the biggest um, sort of push was a professor in university that taught a pretty incredible course known as astrobiology, which unfortunately is not even taught anymore because people kind of lost interest. Very, very sad. But that course really inspired me to pursue this and eventually turn this into a kind of a career that I have today. I personally think this is actually an important field that we need to make sure that is not forgotten and we definitely need to keep pushing people to study space a little bit more. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't. And space out. And as always, bye-bye.